Good morning. Welcome to Southern Oaks Church. We are so glad that you have brought your mother to church. She would have slept in if you hadn't got her out of bed. How many of you had a mom that brought you and made you go to church when you were young? All right. Thank God for godly mothers. It made an impact. <clears throat> Um, in the way of announcements, I just want you to know that we are having Vacation Bible School uh, planned for this summer, and we would love to have adult help with that. It will be June 13 through 16 in the evening from 6 to 8.30, and our children's minister is in the back here. Her name is Nellen, and she has a phone number by her, uh, her ministry on our our, our uh Web page. All right, so, Nellen, is there anything else about that Vacation Bible School I need to say? Um, thank you for your prayers. Keep right on praying. This is going to be a great year, and we can feel the prayers already, but it's not going to happen without your prayers. I got lots of help, but the one thing I would like to say that we do feed the kids a full meal. If you would like to help with the cost of that meal, we would love to have your uh, share. And your money to help pay for those meals. So just drop in an extra square dollar bill or whatever and be sure that you note that it is for the GPS meal. Thank you very, very much, Nellen. All right, well, welcome. And uh, just for the abundance of caution not to <coughs> spread germs, would you just wave at everybody right now and show everybody that you're friendly, all right? We're so glad you're here. Um, now we're going to, we're, just let me fill you in on the schedule a little bit. We're going to have the children's sermon first, and then we're going to have baby dedication. Um, there are nine or ten children being dedicated today. Uh, two, because Dad couldn't be there this week because he's in the uh, National Guard, they're going to dedicate next Mother's Day. So we've got a lot of babies. The, the Lord has blessed the wombs of the people that come here. Um, and we are going to give a peach tree to each baby dedicated. Um, but right now we're going to have the children's sermon, and this is the children's sermon. Uh, first, I'll say good morning, boys and girls. Thank you all, little kids and big kids. And um, for the children's sermon today, I'm going to ask the children to help honor all the ladies in the church, all the ladies. Maybe you are not a mama, but you know how to be a mama, or you've had a mama. So we're going to honor all the ladies in our church. Like, Diane, you, you don't have any official children, but you have mothered me and Tim and everybody on the backpack trips and cooked for us. So we're going to honor all the ladies today by giving them a carnation. So children, if you would help, come on down. And ladies, I want you to stand until you receive your flower. So if all the ladies would stand and children come get a couple of flowers and take them to ladies who are standing. And you, when you've given one, you can come back and get another. And when you receive your flower, be seated so it doesn't confuse the children. Gosh, there are a lot of children, aren't they? I've never seen so many children. And children, when you are through handing out a flower to somebody, you can gather with Miss Nell and our children's minister at this door over here. We've still got some mamas. Are we running out of flowers? Oh, good. We've still got some more flowers. 
Keep standing. There's a lady back here. And there's a mama right here. All right. We got her. Um, Kara, did you get a flower? Okay. How about in the balcony? Any ladies in the balcony? We got a couple of ladies up there. Did y'all get a flower? And there's a lady over here hiding. Uh, you got a flower. Great. Okay. Okay, men, let's give it up for all the mamas and ladies in our church. <laughs> Woo! Boys and girls, you can follow Miss Nellen out. And while you're following Miss Nellen out to the Children's Church, I would like to invite... Get all the parents who are going to be dedicating their children to come on up. Dads, if you are dedicating a child this morning, bring that beautiful package of wonderful up here. Now, this is going to be a time when we are um, doing, oh, I forgot the formal official seminary name for this, is, is a congregational response. So we're going to put up a dedication up on the screen. And before, um, before we start the dedication, do we have the pictures of the children? We can do a quick slide through. I know some of y'all can't see all the babies from where you are without binoculars. So, yes, let's, ju let's just do it right now. Parents, the pictures are behind you there. If you All right. In Deuteronomy 6, the Bible says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and commit yourselves wholeheartedly to these commandments that I am giving you today. Parents, Repeat them again and again to your children. Read it all, parents. Talk about them when you are at home and when you are away on a journey, when you are lying down and when you are getting up again. Parents, I'm asking you a very important question. Do you commit today before God in this church to raise your children in the love, instruction, and worship of Jesus Christ as Lord? Do you? Congregation, Jesus took a child and put him in their midst, and taking the child into his arms, he said, Congregation, whoever receives such a child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the Father also. Congregational family, do you commit before God and these parents and children to do your best to provide a loving, spirit-filled, and spirit-led church where Jesus is glorified as the way, the truth, and the life, 
and to model the Christ life before them? And do you commit to pray for their protection, salvation, and for the families represented here? Do you? Blessed are they, the Bible says. Blessed are they who delight in doing everything the Lord wants. They will be like trees planted along a riverbank, bearing fruit in each season without fail. Their leaves never wither, and in all they do, they prosper. I've got a certificate of dedication to each parent and family represented here, and I'm going to be giving those to you in just a moment. Um, since we had so many children today, I didn't want to haul in all the peach trees. So the peach trees represent the fruit of the womb. And then you will be spending the next 10, 15 years buying the fruit of the loom. <laughs> and these children will someday get to be old enough to think you're not very smart. But one day, they will get old enough to realize how smart you really were. I have peach trees outside in a trailer for every child being dedicated. Um, and because they're about six feet tall, I got to thinking some of y'all don't have pickup trucks. For those of you that don't have pickup trucks, if you will give me your address, I will deliver them this week. Uh, probably tomorrow so they don't burn up in the heat that we're having, all right? So right now, we're going to have a prayer of dedication. Would you bow your heads? And families, congregation, I want you to do something a little um, old-fashioned, tent revival type stuff. I want you to stand while I'm praying, and I want you to lift your hands as if you are sending some Holy Spirit power on these families, O oh, gracious Heavenly Father, you are an awesome, awesome, wonderful God, and you are our Heavenly Father. And we know, Father, how much you love us because you gave your Son for us. Now, Lord, these parents are giving their children back to you in dedication. And, Lord, this day they are dedicating to do all that they can to raise these children to where they know you, love you, and follow you. So, Lord, these parents need extra anointing. They need your blessing, your wisdom, your protection, and your love. I pray, Father, we pray as a congregation that you will anoint them and answer this prayer. And the people said, Amen. You can be seated, parents. One more thing. I just got to tell you that this couple right here that happens to be my daughter and son-in-law and this couple right here that happened to be my adopted daughter and son-in-law <laughs> not too long ago they came to their pastor and said we can't get pregnant would you please pray and this couple right here we met in the back room by the kitchen and we anointed her with oil and we prayed for healing and this is the fruit and the answer of specific prayers isn't that awesome I could preach with you all standing the entire time right here do you all want me to do it no okay thank you bless y'all Jane will hand out these certificates after church, all righty? Impossible. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you for being here, for your spirit falling on us this morning. Lord, we just ask that you bless all the mothers out there this morning, Lord. Be with them, bless their day, and give them many, many more Mother's Day to come, Lord. I ask that you just bless Pastor Joe and bless the passage that he's about to give to us, Lord. We just ask all these things in your Heavenly Son's name. Amen. I heard that, amen. Raising that boy up right. We are in a sermon series entitled, Does God Still Speak Through Signs? Then comes Mother's Day, and you think, okay, um, I know that we need to honor our mothers. How, how does that fit? And so I asked the Lord to help. And, and so... Today's sermon is entitled, Signs of Being a Great Mother. And um, there are signs that you will become a mother. Nausea, fatigue, your sleep patterns begin to change, your body changes, your mood changes, and you get a glow. These are signs that you've already become a mother. Fatigue, <laughs> mood changes, no sleep. You lose your glow until you're looking at that newborn baby sleeping. Love at first sight for your child. You forget you love your husband. You pray that you will not become nauseous because you don't have time to get sick. And another sign is you persevere. But when we're looking at what are the signs of a great mother, there are lots of great mothers in the Bible. Eve would have to be rated at near the top. She is the mother of all of us. And then you would come to the mother of Moses, who took her child and made sure that child would live when Pharaoh and the government was killing babies. And you could just go on and on and on examples in the Bible about mothers who were great. One of the things I noticed is that there was not one single mom in the Bible who was perfect. Not a one. I think one of the things that moms struggle with the most is a feeling of not being good enough. And let me just tell you, you will never be good enough in your own strength. None of us are. But God has honored you and blessed you with the role of motherhood. And we can learn this morning from a certain mother in the Bible, signs of being a great mom. And that mom that I want to focus on today is the mother of Jesus. In fact, our brothers and sisters in the Catholic denomination, they have a title for her that really elevates her in the minds of all. They call her the mother of God. Now, we know she's the mother of Jesus in the flesh, but she is an example of a great mother in many ways, and her life bookmarks at the beginning of Jesus' ministry and at the end of Jesus' ministry. And there are some qualities about her that I think that even us men can learn from. Before we read the scriptures, I want to ask you to bow your heads and let's ask God's power and ask God's presence and that he will speak to us this morning. Our gracious Heavenly Father, you are awesome and we love you. Thank you, Lord, for our moms. Thank you, Lord, for your mom. 
Lord, we don't get to choose our moms, but you chose yours. That's just incredible right there. And Father, this young woman that you chose to be your mom, she is an example for all. I pray, Father, that as we look at how she was there at the beginning of Jesus' ministry and at the end of his earthly ministry, Father, we pray that you will speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> In John chapter 2, the, the writer of the gospel, who happens to be the apostle John, in John chapter 2, the gospel writer tells us about the very first miracle that launched the ministry of Jesus. In fact, the outline for the gospel of John are seven signs. The resurrection of Jesus is the seventh sign. But the first sign happened, the miracle at a wedding in Cana. I want you to follow along with me and as we read something which is underlined or highlighted, I would like to ask you to read it aloud together. <clears throat> On the third day, and by the way, I could preach a whole sermon about the times in the Bible where it says on the third day because you know what happened on one particular third day. Whenever the gospel writer John uses that term on the third day, what he implies by saying that is that God is fixing to do something. So on the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Now let me just say that weddings in those days were a little bit more ornate and elaborate than weddings these days. If I were to ask you men, how many of you like getting dressed up and going to somebody's wedding? How many of you would rather stay home and watch football or go play golf? I mean, a wedding today is not that desirable unless it's somebody super super close and you've got to pretend that they're super super close if you're going to go right but in that day weddings were the the talk of the village in that day weddings lasted for seven or eight days and you would be fed and you would get a free bar the entire seven days. There would be dancing and drinking and dining for seven days. By the end of the seven-day period, you loved the bride and groom, even if you didn't know them. I mean, it was just great. Everybody wanted to be invited to a wedding. So this was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and then notice what it says next. Who was there? Jesus' mother was there. Now, she is pretty important at this wedding. Notice does it say yet that Jesus is there. It says that there's a big wedding and Jesus' mama is there. In fact, every time in the gospel that Jesus' mother is referred to, she's always referred to as Jesus' mother. Reminds me of everybody in San Antonio said, this is Joe Taylor's mama. No, they didn't. But <clears throat> they did for Jesus. They said, this is Jesus' mother. So Jesus' mother was there, which means that she was invited before anybody else. We don't know if it was some relative of hers. We don't know if it was a best friend of hers. But somehow... Mary, the mother of Jesus, qualified for being one of the wedding administrators. So Jesus' mother was there. Next verse says, And Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. But they were secondary. See, Jesus' mom had to be there. But, you know, Jesus and his disciples, they were also invited to the wedding. Now, do you know how old Jesus was when he began his earthly ministry? 30, that's right. He, he died on the cross at the age of 33. So I've always told people when they 
turn 33 or 34, I say, now you are older than Jesus. So 33 is when he died on the cross. He's 30 years old, and he's still living in the basement. He's still living with mama. That was expected. It was family. And so Jesus and his disciples get to tag along to the wedding. Now, when the wine was gone, Jesus' mother says to Jesus, they have no more wine. Now, I want you to notice she doesn't tell him what to do. She's just telling him how it is. The wine is gone. All right. And then how does Jesus respond? He says, dear woman, why do you involve me? And I'm going to get back to that in a minute. You see, in the King James and in the New American Standard, it leaves off the word dear, but it's implied. And I believe that the translators have added that in the NIV and the TEV and some of the other more recent translations is because if... In our day and time, if a son would look at his mother and say, mother or woman, in fact, I think some boys have turned to their mothers and said, woman, and they only did it once. <laughs> so in the King James where it says woman, it, it's implied it's a very tender response. And he says, dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. Let's read that together. My time has not yet come. So <clears throat> his mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Read it one more time together. Do whatever he tells you. Well, nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water, and they filled them to the brim. Then Jesus told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine, he didn't realize where it had come from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside. And he said, everyone who brings out, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. So give them the good stuff first. After they've drunk the good stuff, they don't care if the other stuff is good or not. But he said, you have saved the best wine till now. Now, this, the first of Jesus' miraculous signs, Jesus performed at Cana in Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. All right, now... I want you to understand this was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. This is the first part of the bookmark. And then we're going to go to the end and read the scripture. And I just want that just to sit into your, your mindset and your memory. And uh, then we're going to ask God to speak to us. Okay, in John chapter, uh, what is it, 19. It's at the end of Jesus' ministry. And Jesus is on the cross, and Mary, his mother, is there watching him die. Now, near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Now, when Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. See the same phrase, dear woman. That phrase was mentioned at the beginning of his ministry and then at the end of his ministry. He said, he looked to the disciple, John, and he said, John, here's your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. All right, bow with me in prayer one more time, please. Father, 
Thank you for these scriptures. Thank you, Lord, that your presence is here. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. And thank you, Lord, that you're going to speak to us now. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. The very first miracle that Jesus did to begin his ministry was at a wedding. Here are some of the points I want us to remember. Is that Jesus wasn't invited to the wedding first. Jesus' mother was. But then he and the disciples got invited to come too. Then Mary realizes they've run out of wine. Now, when you've run out of wine at a seven-day wedding ceremony, the party's over, and it's an embarrassment to the parents of the bride and the groom, especially the parents of the bride. It's an embarrassment. What do you do now? You didn't have enough money to provide for the party that you knew in advance was going to last seven days? What do you do? Well, so what does Mary do? She comes to Jesus, and she says, there's no more wine. My brother, my, one of my older brothers, uh, he and his wife have got this agreement. She can ask him to do anything, but she cannot tell him how to do it. Have you ever noticed that oftentimes people not only tell you what to do, they tell you how to do it? Have you not noticed that oftentimes we are exactly the same way in our prayers? We tell God what needs to be done, and then we tell him how to do it. Do we not? And yet Mary has modeled for us one of the ways to pray to Jesus. She just brings the problem to Jesus, and she doesn't tell him how to solve the problem. Because I think by now, after 30 years of living with the Lord Jesus, she finally understands that this man has an anointing and he knows how to get things done. She doesn't have to tell him. So she comes and she just says, we're out of wine. But notice how Jesus replies. Dear woman, what does that have to do with me? Like, that's not my job. And notice the powerful influence of a mother. Notice what Mary says immediately after Jesus says. In fact, Jesus says, what does that have to do with me? My time has not yet come. And what does Mary say to, to Jesus? Nothing. She doesn't have to. Yeah, I, I could just picture this. Mary comes to Jesus and says, Son, we're out of wine. And Jesus gets a little, little defensive and says, But Mom, what does that have to do with me? My time's not yet come. She doesn't even answer him. She just turns to the other waiters and says, do whatever he says to do. Is that pressure or what? Now, can you know, let's not forget what Jesus said. Jesus said, my time, that's very holy, my time has not yet come. Because, this is good. You see, in John chapter 7, the apostle tells us that Jesus didn't do anything on his own schedule. That everything he did and everything he spoke he did as a response to his heavenly father's leadership. And so now he is telling his mama, it's not my time. You know what she's thinking. It will be in just a few minutes. <laughs> you see, moms, when mothers go to their heavenly father, and tell their heavenly father what the need is, you don't have to tell God how to meet that need. You just need to sit and wait and trust and believe because your heavenly father knows the power of a mama's 
prayer. So she turns to the servants and she just says, do whatever he tells you to do. Now, I think that's some of the best mom advice you will ever get your entire life. Just do what Jesus says to do. If Jesus says give, give. If Jesus says love, love. If Jesus says forgive, forgive. If Jesus says serve, serve. I think if you don't get anything from today's message, that's the one thing you need to get is that the mother of Jesus Christ says, do whatever Jesus says to do. And the fifth commandment in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments, It says, honor your father and your mother because this is the first commandment with a promise. And the promise is, if you honor your mother and father, it will be well with you. You will live a long, blessed life. And so, you may not have had a perfect mama, but you can still honor her. If it were not for your mama, you would not be here today. If it were not for your mama, you wouldn't be anywhere where you are supposed to be in life except for your mama. So she says, whatever he tells you to do, to do. And then the passage goes on to say that there were six water pots. They average between 20 and 30 gallons of water. So you take six times, uh, let's say, 25, what do you get? 100 and 150 gallons. So the water was changed to wine. My mama, my precious mama, five foot two to begin with, 4'11 at the end of her life. Her doctor made her mad. Her doctor said, if you lose any more height, you'll be qualified as a short person. So uh, my mama had a dad that had a home still in his backyard and had to hide from the law. My mama hated alcohol. If my mama had her way, Jesus would have turned wine into water. (laughs) But that didn't happen according to God's word. God's word said that he turned the water into wine. My dad, I mean, my my mom was such a strong, strong strong-willed Christian teetotaler, My dad would shake in his boots so much he had to hide all of his alcohol. Usually in the trunk of his car. And he'd go to the ranch a lot. (laughs) But he didn't get any of that alcohol in the house. So, where was I? So, Jesus, okay, he turns 150 gallons of water into 150 gallons of wine. And I can tell you there are a lot of men today that say that was the best miracle ever. But you know, if you think about it, if it was going to be the start of your ministry, wouldn't you want the start to be like walking on water or something like that or or raising someone from the dead? No, it was just a wedding ceremony where he just turned water into wine. Now, think about what Jesus said. He said, Mama, it's not my time yet. She knew that it was his time. She saw his potential. And like a good mama, she encouraged him to get started. He said he didn't do anything without his father's leading. But you know his father said, well, you better do what your mama says. And mama said, it's time. So they bring the, the wine now. The servant's bringing the water or the wine to the headmaster of the wedding. Now, I want you to go with me with this. Nowhere in the Bible does it say at what point that water turned into wine. Nowhere. I mean, for all we know, it could have looked like water while the headmaster tasted it. We don't know if as soon as they filled those water buckets with water, if right then it turned into wine, or if somehow while it was being carried to the headmaster waiter, it turned. We don't know. 
But as that headmaster drank it, he said, where's the bridegroom? And I think they didn't know if the bridegroom was going to be criticized or not. But then he said to the bridegroom, what you did was good before, but what has turned out is phenomenal. And I believe there is a lesson, church family, for us, because when you have a problem and you call upon Jesus and you turn it over to God, your problem, the Bible says, can be changed and transformed into a blessing. What you thought was just mediocre and was just okay can become phenomenal. When God gets a hold of something because a mama has called attention to it and mama has called Jesus by name and asked for a special help, then all of a sudden what is normal and average can become exceedingly abundantly beyond all we could imagine and God can change and transform even something as simple as water into something else that will bring glory to the Lord God himself. So the headmaster says to the, to the bridegroom, <clears throat> most people serve the mediocre stuff first, uh, or the good stuff first, and then the mediocre, what, yeah. But I'm not good with this alcohol stuff, you know. <clears throat> I followed after my mama's teaching. She prayed for me into the ministry. And she made sure that I wouldn't drink. I tried it once. Didn't like it because I felt so guilty about my mama. Um, so I'm not condemning anybody that drinks. But if I drank, I would feel the condemnation of my mama from heaven and glory right now. So back to the scriptures. Where was I? So, yeah. So, so the waiter says to the bridegroom, you, you have saved the very, very best for last. It's phenomenal. So then it says that Jesus and his mama and his disciples went to the next village. Now, that's just a, a minor little tidbit, but this is what I want you to know. I want you to know that Jesus' role, I mean Mary's role with Jesus seemed to be different until his ministry launched. At this point, she backed off, and she followed him. But up until this point, he still followed her. Now, bookmark this all the way to the end. Jesus is on the cross. No mother should have to watch her son die. Jesus is on the cross, and Mary is there with her sister and two friends. And she is pouring out her heart because she's having to watch her son die. Now, I want to read a passage of Scripture that you know probably by heart, but it was when Gabriel showed up and said to Mary that she was going to be pregnant. Listen. Gabriel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will never end. And she treasured those things in her heart. But when you're looking at your son dying on a cross, do you really think that that's the way you thought it was going to turn out? When Gabriel the angel said, your son will be great and he will have the reign of King David, and yet you are seeing your own son suffer and die on a cross. Well, this is what I want us to learn about Mary's greatness. Even though things did not turn out the way she expected them, she never wavered in her belief and her favor for her son. 
You see, that's just the way it is for moms. Moms always believe the best for their children. Don't you know how hard it was for her when she is there at the foot of the cross and she hears people mocking him? She hears people insulting him, criticizing him, saying, if you really are the Messiah, why don't you get down off the cross? And it says that her little close group of friends were there, her sister and a couple of other Marys, and the Apostle John. But where was Peter? Maybe he was hiding in the back of the crowd, but maybe he was just too scared to show up. Where was Thaddeus? Where was Bartholomew? Where were all the other apostles? Where were the 5,000 that Jesus had just fed the fish and the loaves just a few weeks earlier? Where were the crowds that just a couple of days earlier said, Hosanna to the king? Where was everybody else? Where was Lazarus? You find out who your friends are when you go through tough times. But Mary was there. Mary showed a ministry of presence, and she never left her son. She believed in him, and she never quit, even though sometimes she didn't understand. You see, when you are in the throes of difficulties in life, you can quit your job. You can, you can quit your marriage. You can quit your birth family. You can quit school. But you see what a mom does? She never quits her kids. She's always there. Great mothers are always there, hoping and believing the best. I've told y'all before, my mom was so proud of me, I could do no wrong. I was in the marching band. I know it's an old story, but it's the truth. She was so proud of me. She turned to everybody else and said, look at my son. He's the only one in step. <laughs> you know, that's what moms do. They love you. They support you. They encourage you. They're there when you make mistakes. They forgive you. They show love to you. And that's what Mary did. I want to know, did any of you have moms that prayed for you? Any of you have moms that stood by you when you messed things up really bad? Any of you have moms that were so awesome because they just loved you? You know the old phrase? He had a face that only a, a mother could love. That's kind of an insult to the guy's face. But it's an acknowledgement that moms always love no matter what we look like. I don't know where my wife is going right now. I'm embarrassing her, but uh, <laughs> I thought, don't, don't leave, Brenda. I thought, I'll look at her, make her feel embarrassed now. I thought that there was no other greater mother in the world other than my mom until we had children, and there's no better mom in life than my wife. At some point, every mother has to let go. At some point, every mother has to trust their children to God. And you never know when that dream or that hope might be totally resurrected because now your child is in God's hands, not yours. You can still be there. You still pray. You can still encourage, but at some point, we have to turn our children over to God. I know that uh, Mother's Day can be a very um, emotional day for a lot of people. And uh, Bobby Jones, sitting in the back, he is our church's deacon, my best friend. And uh, his wife passed away in December, who was our administrative assistant, first Mother's Day without his wife. And Michelle, his daughter, first Mother's Day without their mama. But their mama is in glory. 
And that is the promise that we all hold on to because it's true, is that when a mama follows Jesus, there's a special place in glory for mamas. So I said at the beginning of the message, one of the things that mothers seem to, if you're a great mama, most all mamas, everyone I've met, feels inadequate. Every mama feels like I wasn't a good enough mama. You know why you feel that way? It's because you know, you know that there is always more. There's always better. But rest assured, your love for your child will never be forgotten. Never. Thank you, moms. Y'all are all awesome. Children, husbands, let's stand and give our moms the attention they deserve. <laughs> With the praise team come forward, let's all stand. Would you bow with me in prayer, please? And we know at this account of Mary being at the cross, it doesn't mention anything about Joseph. We know that most theologians believe that Joseph had died by this time. But that just means that Jesus' mother was a single mom. And Lord, we know that single moms have so much responsibility on their shoulders. And Lord, so many have been raised by godly single moms who have cried out to God their Lord to you. And you have answered their prayers and they have sacrificed, and they have served, and they have blessed. Father, thank you for all of the mothers today. And for those who have gone on to glory, thank you, Lord, that we are who we are today, largely because of our moms. In Jesus' name we pray, and the people said, Amen. let's worship.
at this time, we are going to draw some names out of a basket to honor specific whoever we draw. Go ahead and sit down if you want. Like, if you're late and have to be somewhere, um, you got a roast in the oven that's burning, whatever, you are welcome, but you won't get the prize unless you're here. So uh, <clears throat> we are going to draw some names and give some gift certificates. Uh, Jane, do I have those baskets of names, please? Did anybody not get a name that you would like? I mean, a card. Okay, we got some over here. Need some. Um. All right. Andrew and Bill, wherever those strips are, if you can get those strips and uh, a pen, if you need a pen too, you got a pen. All right. Right here and here. Got quite a few. All right. Oh, gosh, a lot of folks have not put their names down yet. So can we get some more guys to help? And some up here. So glad y'all are back. All right, as soon as you fill out, put your name on one of those sheets of paper, if we can get it right back immediately. All right, can we get those baskets and names up here? Another name coming right there. Jane, right behind you. The million dollar prize has already been chosen. Oh, thank you. Right up here. All right. Now, I know most all the children are at Children's Church, but who's the youngest uh, person here that can come and draw some names for me? All right. Can he draw some names? Bring them on up here. Yeah. What's his name? Keegan. Keegan. Hi, Keegan. Can you help me, buddy? Come on up, Keegan. See, aren't you glad you didn't go to Children's Church? All right. I want you to reach in and pull out one and hand it to me. We're going to stay here a little. Kathy Bush, where is Kathy? That might have been a setup. That was his name. Your grandmother? Yay! You've raised your grandchildren right, haven't you? Good job, baby. Do whatever Jesus tells you to do, Keegan. <laughs> All right. Um, or some of these, uh, I, they're paper clipped together, so I don't know if they're all three, if they're different ones or what. Yeah, so. they're paper clipped together, keep it together. Okay, even though there's like two of them together? Uh-huh. All right, since these are two together. Thank you. Thank you very much. So glad. Okay, now, oh, Keegan. Oh, Oop, where'd the basket go? Draw Let's draw name. another name, see if it could be your mama this time. Rachel Brothers. You are anointed, young man. Here you go, Rachel. Boy, what a special son. 
He has a blessed life. All right, let's draw another one. Nor Becker, where are you? Nor has a newborn, and her husband is in the National Guard, and so since he couldn't be here for baby dedication today, they're going to dedicate next Mother's Day, but it's a great way to get recognized. Thank you, Nor. Okay, let's draw another one. My wife's is that one over there. No. <laughs> No name. You know, there are so many mothers that do things that are unrecognized, so thank you for whoever you are. Okay, let's draw another one. Got to think fast. Deb Foreman. There you are. Deb, we love you. Deb has been, Deb and her husband, Hal, have been foster parents. How many all together? 127. Oh, my gosh. 127. And you still look great. That's amazing. All right, one more, buddy. Read it for me. I can't read without my glasses. Martha Thrasher. Now, Margaret, I think it's a God thing when this is your first Sunday here, right? <laughs> Second Sunday, and you're related to Kathy? I am, her sister. You look like her. Y'all are blessed. And this is God's way of saying he loves you. I need to give it to her? No, ma'am, this is yours. Thank you very, very much. All right. Thank you, buddy. Thank you so much. Let's stand together. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for a wonderful start to a wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for all our precious ladies in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.